Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's episode of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to explore using a path to make a selection. Paths are vector based. That is to say that they use curved lines or mathematical shapes to create a line or selection. Paths work great, especially when you have a curved object. Let's see how they work. So I have an image here, and what I want to do is select these curved areas here. Sure, we could do this with tools like the lasso tool, but it's pretty hard to select a curved line, and you'd have to keep clicking and clicking to try to make a curve and soften it over time. And that just doesn't work very well. Instead, you could choose the pen tool to create a path. Now, the pen tool creates vectors, and what you want to do is click to add a control point, and then while holding down the mouse button, drag. These handles help determine the curve. So by extending that, you'll see that it's going to create an arced curve. We'll go ahead and click again and drag, and sometimes you have to rotate. See, that's going the wrong way, but this is going the right way. There we go. Now, while we're working here, we could start to modify. If you hold down the command key, you can grab that individual control point there on the handle and pull that out and adjust the arc. Notice how we can take pretty precise control there. We got the top part there well. Let's click over here on this one, command click to select it, and grab the control point there. I'm holding down the command key. That worked pretty well. Now, let's go ahead and click right here and pull. We'll go ahead and pull these other ones in. The command key modifier works pretty well there, but notice how both sides are affected. So let's go ahead and choose undo and we'll fix that in a moment. Come down here, click near the bottom and drag as well. That creates that arc and then we can just simply click and click to close the loop. Now, when you get to that last point there, you'll see the pen tool changes to a circular icon next to it. That indicates you're about to close the loop. When we do that, we have a complete path. Now, the path needs to be modified. One thing you'll want to do is choose the direct selection tool, which will allow you to click on the path to select points. Notice we see them right there, and there are our handles. Now normally when you pull, the handle's going to move in both directions. So for this, we'll come up and we'll grab the Convert Point tool. This will allow us to grab individual points and move them independently. So we could pull these top two points in, since that really isn't a curved line there, and then come down here and play with this one. That works pretty well. I'll grab it here. Notice if we click once, it goes back to a hard angle. So you may need to click and drag so you get the right shape. That worked well. And I'll just option drag or alt drag on a PC to pull that in. And that's fine. It's OK for the path to extend outside the edges of the image here, which is one advantage of working full screen. Remember, you could press the F key to cycle full screen mode and use the hand tool to move the image around so you have more working space to get an accurate selection with the path tool. Now, once you've closed that loop, you have a work path. There are two types of paths, work paths, which are temporary, and saved paths, which get stored with the image. If we look over here at paths, you'll see work path. If we double click and name that, we can call that lower staircase. And you see that it now has a name and is saved in the document. Let's go ahead and quickly do the top one here again. I'm going to grab the pen tool, P for pen. Click and drag to create the first arc. Come on down, click and drag to create that curve there. Remember, hold down the command key to tweak. There we go. That worked pretty well. Click, click and drag, click and drag, there we go. Controlling my arcs, 
and then coming back up and closing the loop. Now that's not a perfect selection, we've got a big bubble here. So we're going to go ahead, grab that Convert Point tool, start to click on individual points there, Command click to select works well, and we can pull that in, hold down the Option key if needed, and pull it just the one direction. There we go, got a good arc there around the staircase. Come over here, click and drag, good, and there we go. You see it's already been added to the lower staircase path, and that worked fine, and it created two separate paths stored within the one saved path. We can go ahead and click on that to load it. Command click or control click on a PC will load the selection, and now we can jump on over to layers, and let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer. There we go. We'll tweak the color a little bit, making it a little bit redder, a little bit less saturated, and a little darker. Here's the original, here's the new results, and notice it does a great job of following the curve of those staircases. The pen tool and the paths that it make can be a little tricky. You're going to want to practice with it, and it takes some time to get used to the pen tool. You're either going to love the pen tool or you'll hate it. Most people feel pretty passionate about it. Pens are great when you have curved shapes to select. Otherwise, you may not find a use for them unless you're going to be doing a lot of illustration or print layout where you need the tool to make things like vector shapes or paths for transparency. My name's Rich Harrington. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. We've got a lot more cool things you could check out over at rastervector.com. And while you're there, be sure to take a look at our new book, Understanding Adobe Photoshop CS4. Thanks again.